We need to understand our existence and place in the universe, only then can we truly understand the search ahead of us. There are 10 billion galaxies in the observable universe. There is on average, 100 billion stars, in each one of these 10 billion galaxies. This equates to 1 billion trillion stars, in our visible universe. There are 10 times more stars in the night sky, than grains of sand in the world's deserts and beaches. The vast majority of stars in our Milky Way galaxy alone, host planets, many of which may be capable of supporting life as we know it. The number of planets capable of supporting life is so vast, the numbers are beyond the capability of the human mind to comprehend. The distances between the stars are of such a vast magnitude we measure them in light years. Can a human comprehend the distances between the stars? Is it possible to travel between them? Light speed travels at 300,000 kilometers per second, or 186,000 miles per second. The speed of light will travel around the world 7.5 times in a single second. Proxima Centauri is our closest star, second to our own sun. It is 4.22 light years away from us. This means to get there in 4.22 years, we would need to be traveling at a speed which is the same as orbiting the Earth seven times in a single second. The human race's only means of escaping our planet's gravity is still rockets. Once free from Earth's gravity, we can use ion drives to increase our speeds. Solar sails, laser propulsion, and plasma drives are possibilities to traverse local space, but currently these are all unproven technologies. The fastest outward bound spacecraft, Voyager 1, has covered 1 600th of a light year in 30 years and is currently moving at 1 18,000th the speed of light. At this rate, a journey to Proxima Centauri would take 80,000 years. So is interstellar travel ever going to be possible? The pale blue dot. This is the furthest photo ever taken of our planet. The Earth is just a pixel in the beam of orange scattered light. All our history, the existence of everything we know and love, on that single pixel of insignificant light, lost in infinite space. The pale blue dot speech by Carl Sagan puts our existence into spectacular clarity. The human race is barely entering the infancy of electronic and chemical technology. Technology, which has been present for 100 years, at best. Just a single lifespan of a human being. Yet in this short flicker in time, we created this spacecraft, which has now left our solar system and made this picture possible. We are using devices we could not even imagine 100 years ago. We can communicate at the speed of light across the planet and into space. Phones, planes, space stations, rockets, computers, private companies are even building spaceships to take us to Mars. Our technology is advancing expeditiously and shows no signs of slowing. If intelligent life exists, due to the age of the universe, it is almost inconceivable they are less advanced than us. Mathematically the most likely scenario is they are a minimum of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years ahead of us. Vastly advanced aliens or AIs would inevitably look to travel interstellar once they have colonized their own local solar system. We are already searching the heavens for life and we have barely stepped foot on our own moon. January 1996, the Hubble telescope captured one of its most famous pictures. 
the picture was supposed to be a showcase of what the telescope can achieve at its maximum power. Hubble was focused on a seemingly black area of space, the size of which was equivalent to looking at the night sky through the eye of a needle at arm's length. The resulting picture contained an astonishing 3,000 galaxies. It was a glimpse so distant that the galaxies in the image were from the early birth of the universe. This picture changed our perspective of the universe. The Hubble is now over 25 years old and continues its mission to this day. In late August 2009 after the Hubble received an upgrade, a more powerful deep field image was taken. This time over 10,000 galaxies could be seen, some of which dated to just 500 million years after the Big Bang. The James Webb Telescope will launch in 2021. Incredibly the James Webb is over 100 times more powerful than the Hubble. The total mirror space on the James Webb is 6.5 meters in diameter. It is made of 18 hexagonal, gold-plated, beryllium mirrors, which fold into position when deployed. The mirror is as tall as a two-story building. By comparison the mirror on the Hubble is 2.4 meters in diameter. The James Webb Telescope will only see in the infrared spectrum, as opposed to the visible, ultraviolet, and infrared spectrum like the Hubble. It is designed this way because the telescope will focus beyond Hubble's maximum range, where the light spectrum changes only to infrared. The further away a galaxy is, the more red-shifted the light becomes. Because the James Webb will be looking back to the earliest time of the universe, all the redshift light will be in the very deep infrared spectrum. The James Webb will be the most powerful tool ever created for studying a distant star's light as it passes through a planet's atmosphere. This is known as spectroastronomy and reveals the chemical makeup of the planet's atmosphere. We will finally have the technology to find planets that have atmospheres the same as ours. Most astonishing of all, the James Webb will be able to determine if the atmosphere has been affected by organic life, such as forests or even heavy industrial activity. The James Webb is now 12 years overdue and massively over budget. The technical hurdles to overcome are almost impossible to achieve with current technology. Interference is a problem for the most sensitive instrument ever created. Specifically infrared radiation that is emitted from any source of heat. To solve this problem, the James Webb will be positioned 1 million miles from Earth, in the permanent shadow of the Earth. It will orbit a special region of space, where the Earth and Sun's gravity cancel each other out. The telescope will continually use thrusters to keep it in a precise location, using the Earth to block heat and radiation from the Sun. The James Webb will also deploy a four-layer membrane shield with aluminium on one side and silicon on the other. Each layer is thinner than a human hair but unfolds to the size of a tennis court. The James Webb telescope is designed to fold up and fit inside a rocket. Once the telescope is in position, there are so many parts to unfold, the process will take 14 days to complete. Unlike the Hubble, which required astronauts to repair on more than one occasion, the James Webb will be so far out in space, beyond the orbit of the moon, that no rescue can be attempted. Everything must work perfectly, first time, there is no room for error. The James Webb will be so powerful, it will see the beginning of the universe, it will see atmospheres of distant planets, it might find proof of life on alien worlds, it will change our understanding of the universe in ways we cannot begin to imagine. With ever-increasing power and sophistication SETI has been searching the heavens, searching for a signal from a distant alien civilization. 
with the exception of the WOW signal incident, for over five decades their search has failed to locate a scientifically verifiable signal. What should we make of SETI search? Should we conclude we are alone in the universe? Many astronomers have compared the 50-year search to extracting less than one liter of water from all the oceans of the Earth, then concluding that there are no fish in the sea because there is none in our sample. Why haven't the aliens detected us by now? After all, the human race has been beaming out signals for over 75 years at the speed of light. Our signals have therefore traveled 75 light years from the Earth. Our galaxy is 200,000 light years wide. On this image of the Milky Way, a 75 light year sphere would not even represent a pinprick. Anything beyond our pinprick bubble of signals would have no chance of knowing that we exist at all. Out of the 10 billion galaxies in the observable universe exists our own Milky Way galaxy. There are 100 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy we call home. The Earth's first broadcasts have just passed our nearest 42 stars. If we imagine for a moment that there are aliens near Proxima Centauri, our transmissions after 4.2 light years in deep space are now so weak and so distorted, it is unlikely they would be able to receive them. It has been calculated to broadcast a signal with any real chance of being detected at a distance of our closest neighbor star Proxima Centauri, the signal would require 110 million watts of energy. The strongest signals humans currently create are around 5 million watts. Our broadcasts are therefore 105 million watts underpowered to be heard at even our closest neighboring star. In reality, the only way humans can find an alien civilization across the void using radio is if the aliens were intentionally broadcasting for interstellar purposes using extremely advanced transmitters way beyond anything currently on Earth. We have little ability to transmit a signal in excess of 110 million watts. So for 50 years we have listened and searched. At this stage the human race is doing the only thing it can, via radio, we are searching the heavens, listening, hoping, waiting. Until recently all SETI could do was randomly search the infinite vastness of space in the hope that the stars it was aiming its telescopes at had planets. That was until the launch of Kepler in 2009. Kepler surveyed a specific region of the Milky Way. Its mission to discover very specific planets, Earth-sized exoplanets in or near the habitable zones of stars. Kepler's mission also made it possible to accurately estimate how many of the billions of stars in the Milky Way have such planets. The results are nothing short of staggering. There are 40 billion of these specific rocky Earth-sized exoplanets located in the habitable zones of their sun-like stars in the Milky Way. For the first time SETI has not only the proof these planets exist, but the actual coordinates for thousands of these planets located in the perfect habitable zones of their host stars. SETI has begun to explore them for signals. Suddenly the chances of locating something out there has dramatically increased. The Big Ear, the WOW Signal, and the Hydrogen Line There is a very good chance that we have already received an alien signal from across the galaxy. The Big Ear to understand the WOW signal, it is essential to understand the radio telescope that received it. The Big Ear Radio Telescope was located on the grounds of the Ohio State University from 1963 to 1998. The main flat reflector measured 103 meters by 33 meters, the equivalent to a circular dish 53 meters in diameter. 
The big ear used two reception horns. Each horn received a cone-shaped beam of reception. The twin horns were aimed at slightly different angles. Unlike most modern radio telescopes, the big ear could only adjust its position above the horizon. It was unable to turn. The big ear was in a completely fixed position in this regard. The telescope relied on the Earth's rotation to scan for signals. The big ear was only capable of scanning any point of deep space for 72 seconds because it was moving with the Earth. The big ear had no electronic means to record information, instead it printed its results onto dot matrix paper. The big ear was the first survey ever for extraterrestrial radio sources. We have come a long way since the big ear. This is ALMA, it is the world's most powerful observatory for studying the universe. It's designed to spot some of the most distant, ancient galaxies ever seen. The WOW Signal On August 15, 1977, four years after the big ear was switched on, the WOW signal was received. No recording of the signal exists. The big ear continually printed results onto reams of dot matrix paper. There were no hard drives or tapes recording information. There was no scientist present when the signal was registered. Results were periodically collected from the dot matrix printer and analyzed by hand. The ream of paper that contained the WOW signal was collected three days after the signal had been received. The WOW signal was a narrow band signal received at 1420 MHz. This is important because narrow band signals do not exist in nature. Only complex electronics can create a narrow band signal. The hydrogen line. 1420 is the frequency of the hydrogen line, which remains consistent throughout the galaxy. The most abundant atoms throughout interstellar space are hydrogen atoms. These atoms resonate at 1420 MHz which also happens to be the quietest part of the radio spectrum. As if this fact was not the most perfect chance of luck in nature for radio astronomy, unbelievably the frequency is also among the best to penetrate large clouds of interstellar cosmic dust. Because of these uncanny coincidences radio telescopes can detect these atoms easily. This phenomenon provides a spectacular way to observe the structure of the universe. Some of the most detailed Milky Way radio maps have been made because of the hydrogen line. 1420 MHz is considered such a vitally important frequency for radio astronomy that transmitting any signal at this frequency has been internationally prohibited, it is solely reserved for radio astronomy. It has not only been globally reserved for radio astronomy, but also because it has been scientifically accepted that an alien civilization would likely use this number and frequency as a universal communication medium. This conclusion has been reached because the most abundant atoms throughout the galaxy, hydrogen atoms, emit 1420 MHz while they naturally decay and emit radiation. Scientists have concluded that aliens would likely also use this frequency for scientific purposes and would equally reserve the band for radio astronomy as we have by reserving this band from any other background transmissions should provide a clear path of communication across the galaxy. The WOW signal was received at this frequency and came through 30 times louder than any other normal noise occurring around it. The signal lasted 72 seconds, this time scale is important because the big ear's reception moved only with the rotation of the earth. 72 seconds is precisely what is expected from an object in deep space and not an object close to the earth. SETI was able to trace the signal back to the constellation Sagittarius, northwest of the globular cluster M55, which contains 100,000 stars. 
because three days had passed from the signal arriving to the scientist finding the results, radio telescopes could not locate the signal again. No signal like this has ever been received since. Scientists investigated every other possibility to explain the signal, a lost satellite transmission, a military signal, an aircraft signal, a broadcast beam, or even a beam bounced off space debris. Most recently, the tails of two comets which were found to be passing the Earth at a similar time. But when scrutinized under strict science nothing has checked out as being possible explanations for the signal. This is the actual printout from the dot matrix printer, where the WOW signal was found. Each row, down the page, represents 12 seconds of time. The columns on the left half side of the page represented 50 frequencies in the radio spectrum. The numbers and letters in the rows represent a hit in this frequency. The lower the number, the weaker the signal hit. Because there was room for only a single digit in each column, after the number reached 9, letters were then used. So A actually was 10, B was 11, and so on. On the right half of the page you can see six columns detailing the coordinates of the search. Ascension, delineation, latitude, longitude, time. The results from the big ear were nearly always random ones and twos, occasionally the odd three or four. The results nearly never went into the letters. But on this day the scientists saw six, E, Q, U, J, five. This is unprecedented, because a U is 30 times higher than any background noise. The signal represents 72 seconds of time, and arches in and out with the strongest part of the signal in the middle. This occurred as the rotation of the Earth moved the big ear's horn across the signal location in deep space. The time is indicative only of a signal originating from deep space. Despite these facts, in order to be classed as a scientific discovery, the signal had to be verified for a second time independently. Sadly despite our best efforts this was never possible. The biggest question for mankind, are we alone in the universe? May well have just slipped through our fingers. Given the evidence, many leading radio astronomers believe this really was an artificial signal from beyond our solar system. Ultimately we may never know, and each of us needs to reach our own conclusions. Given our current understanding of the universe's laws of physics, is there a better way than radio? SETI has recently launched a new project called Laser SETI. Our closest stars are unlikely to host alien civilizations. Let's consider for a moment that an advanced civilization exists halfway across the galaxy, 100,000 light years away from us. How can this civilization know that we exist? An advanced civilization will have identified planets in the habitable zones of their host stars. Just as we have with Kepler, they may have been searching for radio transmissions, but our transmissions are still 100,000 light years away. Their optical telescopes observe our Earth as it was 100,000 years ago. Using spectroscopy, they can study Earth's atmosphere as our planet transits our Sun. They conclude the Earth is oxygen-rich, has vast oceans and land, and has biological life has no signs of polluting or technological industries. The Earth would likely join a database of planets worthy of a communication attempt. Radio has major limitations for this purpose. The receiving radio dish, here on Earth, would need to be aimed directly at the transmitting source, at the moment the signal arrived. A far superior technology would allow a planet to search the entire night sky at once. But how would this be possible? SETI has recently started a project that is capable of searching all of the sky, all of the time. They will achieve this by placing a network of cameras around the world. They will look for the flashes of powerful lasers that could be produced by an advanced civilization. The technology will be capable of registering a laser flash just one microsecond long and check for repeat flashes, days, 
weeks or months to come. Lasers can traverse the galaxy with less distortion and radio waves, they can also carry tremendous amounts of information. An alien civilization could ping thousands of target planets in hours using advanced laser technology. SETI are using multiple cameras to cover any given point of the sky, which will allow instant confirmation of any signal. SETI is already doing this laser research using large single telescopes on targeted areas of space. However, using existing technology and astronomy-grade equipment, the vast global network of low-cost laser telescopes will be a game-changer, covering the entire sky rather than individual pinpoints. Only time and energy will tell if this method will answer mankind's biggest question. Mankind's Intellectual Box we are using our current knowledge of science and physics to our best ability in order to undertake the search. But perhaps we don't know as much as we like to think. Perhaps it's not even biological life we are looking for. If we don't destroy ourselves first, what we would be capable of in a thousand years is beyond our imaginations. In a million years we may have moved beyond mortal biological beings into entirely different entities with vastly greater lifespans. So how do we incorporate these hypotheses into future searches? Artificial Intelligence Given the extreme advancement of computer technology on our planet, in just a few decades, the human race may not be far away from creating a truly sentient artificial intelligence. It is extremely likely that any advanced alien race will have developed an AI at a level of intelligence we can't even begin to imagine. An advanced alien race could have solved the issue of mortality. An infinitely advanced AI will, by definition, be immortal. 200,000 years to send a signal might be of no concern at all to life forms such as these. Perhaps life forms such as this would have no interest at all in mortal life forms like us who seemingly pop in and out of existence in such a small speck of time. A vastly advanced civilization might have solved the problem of communicating through space and time. Can the speed of light really be broken without even physically moving anywhere? Scientists on Earth have successfully experimented with quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement occurs when two particles are linked together at a quantum level. The two particles can be moved infinite distances apart from one another. Despite any distance they are still able to share information with each other instantaneously. This event occurs seemingly with complete disregard to our known rules of physics. This phenomenon appears to be breaking the rule that no information can be transmitted faster than the speed of light. No human on Earth can explain how or why this phenomenon exists. It has also been proven that the same item can exist simultaneously in different places at the same time. All we know is that when operating at a quantum level, these phenomenon can be observed and are proven to exist. The human race has just begun to build the first quantum computers. Computers which will be capable of thinking and operating in ways completely impossible to standard computers. Quantum entanglement is an example of how little we know. Perhaps there is a universal internet all around us, a system capable of sending information across the galaxy instantly. It is possible that intelligent life across the galaxy is not interested in talking to us until we are a species which has developed to this level of technology. Why would they wait 200,000 years to attempt communicating when they know in far less time we will develop enough to tap into their instant communication techniques? It is likely that all of our current ideas about traveling or sending information across the galaxy might be stuck inside a very small box. A box consisting of, as yet, limited knowledge of the universe. What the future holds is only limited 
by our own imaginations and knowledge. If we keep finding ways to knock on the universe's door, we might find the right trick and suddenly have thousands of civilizations saying, welcome to the club. We may on the other hand, find we are totally unique in the galaxy, we might realize how precious and rare we are and begin to look after our planet and life. Either will be equally amazing.